it's also again if you if you keep breeding short to short to short to short eventually the family will be short and if you remember they only judge uh, judge a bird's roll depends on how far it must be a certain distance to count as a roll but also say I'm going uh, yeah, there we go. And then, okay, the hellos and hellos. Uh, we don't need that, but yeah, you can say hello if you feel like it. <laughs> no, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, okay. My name will be in the description, so it's okay. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nah, I won't put it in. Not this <laughs> time. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Your first question How did you get into roller pigeons? And where or who did you get them from? Okay, so I was born into it. My dad had at birth since I can remember. I mean, there's a photo of me as a baby in front in front of the loft, and um, so yeah, that's that's basically where my love for the pigeons came from. Um, so yeah, <coughs> sort of with my dad, obviously trickled down into me, and then our birds came from the original original imports and still are, are mainly mainly clear blood. You know what I mean? You're not got too many crossings crossing out if you know what i mean so yeah okay your dad is <laughs> yeah sorry yeah my dad Corey west asian most, most people probably will know of him okay. but yeah yeah oh 100%, 100%. Um, okay. for the newcomers in the hobby what are the three things that you would advise them to focus on when starting a roller pigeon family um focus on the role to go to anyone to, to, to buy birds or to do anything or whatever is roll, type and then worry about where it came from you know what I mean don't don't be hung up on uh, uh, it's where the bird comes from if I can say that just if wherever you want to go select if you hear yeah, this guy's got good birds go there go see how they fly how they roll make your own assumption obviously use guidelines that you've heard from other people and all from all these videos that are so awesome but but Go choose your birds out of the sky. That's what I would say. That's that's the number one thing. And then worry later <laughs> where they came from. Okay. Does the size of the loft where you keep your birds have an impact or an effect on how your pigeons perform in the air? Uh, personally, I don't. Th uh, it's a difficult one. It's all all personal preference. Me, I like my my kit loft big enough for the for the perch to fit on the floor. So it means if there's twelve perches there will be enough for 12 birds on the floor and the performance wise um no i don't, I don't think so it, it, it all depends if you if you keep well if you keep 30 birds in a small they too small loft for them yes i think that will influence how they perform yeah well obviously my thoughts got it yeah and even for help i don't think that's yeah i'll this number one yeah. <laughs> Okay, how do you choose a mentor if you are a newbie? Because there are people that would rather say, uh, "Come, I'll sell you beds and make a business out of this." Yeah, see that—that's what's killing our sport. Um, a guy who just wants to make a quick buck out of you, and you—you—you're you, just starting out. You super excited now this guy says to you yeah, he'll help you here's some birds go breed them he doesn't tell you anything he doesn't give you any advice or nothing now you go you breed for your first year second year now your birds that you breed out of this this family is is not good or it doesn't perform up to your standard it, it, it demoralizes you completely like a, you should whoever wants to help you or whoever you choose as your mentor he must say to you okay come let's help let's see Here's the birds, I'll fly them, that's how they roll. You can choose anyone or do less for. I'll give you guidelines on what to do and I'll help you for the first six months. I'll help you flying, uh, training, others, and then you take it from there. That's the type of mentor you must look for. Someone that will help you from the start until he says, okay, you ready, grasshopper, go do it yourself. Okay, 100%. <laughs> there are people who have started their families out of a hen or a cock. Which do you prefer, a cock or a hen, and why? 
Um, it all, so, so I remember, uh, yeah, growing up, my dad always spoke about uh, the foundation, Kako Foundation hen. Uh, I think it's also preference. Um, my dad's family had a foundation hen where everything was built around that bird, you know what I mean, the aspects or whatever. And so it's personal, whatever you feel like. If you have a, a, a cock that you feel, okay, everything must be like this cock, then yes, then make that your foundation and breed around him. If you feel a little bit about the hen, then do it towards the hen. It's, there's no right or wrong, it's what you feel like, okay, that's going to be my foundation pigeon, I'm going to build my family around him. Oh, got it. Do you believe some colors roll better than others? Uh, no, there's, the color has got nothing to do with it. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, so the short answer, no. The color has got nothing but nothing to do with it. Okay, okay, can I can stretch that a bit. Yeah, of course. So what about what about those colors? I think you mentioned something about those colors that we introduce that are that we don't have original Birmingham's from them. Um, Isn't that going to have an influence in how the birds perform? Yes. Okay. So obviously, if if, if people crossed out Birmingham's or rollers yes. to to introduce a color into your into your stock or whatever, yes, I think those birds will. Um, not perform as your pure bloods, if you can call it that. Um, but obviously there is videos where it shows where it took a guy 10, 10 years with a certain color that's actually not a Birmingham color, and yes, now they perform, but never as good as the original thing. It's, oh, got it's... it, got it, got it. Do you, uh, do you stock everything you breed, and how do you stock your birds? No, um, I don't stock everything I breed. It's, it's quite a, it's quite a um, meticulous, I think is the word, process. Um, ideally, I wouldn't have stock birds, only birds that fly and, and breed out of my kit lofts and put them back into the sky. But it w there will be a thing that if you breed, if you breed uh, uh, four babies out of a pair, two gets lost, or well, they, they fly, or whatever, they develop very nicely. But now the dad and the mom passes away. Okay, now you must take the the best one cock or and hen if you got both, and maybe stock them just to pres preserve the blood in your loft, if you know what I mean. But um, yeah, stocking stocking depends on on if you're gonna lose it. If you only bred one bird, uh, are you gonna still you can fly it? But then if the dad dies, obviously maybe we must save it now <laughs> to to preserve the bloodline, if you can call it that. For the newcomers in the hobby, what are the three things that you would advise them to focus on when studying a roller pigeon family? Um, focus on the role. If you go to anyone to, to, to buy birds or to do anything or whatever, is role, type, and then worry about where it came from. You know what I mean? Don't, don't be hung up on uh, uh, it's where the bird comes from, if I can say that. Just wherever you want to go select, if you hear yeah, this guy's got good birds, go there, go see how they fly, how they roll, make your own assumption. Obviously, use guidelines that you've heard from other people, that all, from all these videos that are so awesome, but, but go choose your birds out of the sky. That's what I would say. That's, that's the number one thing. And then worry later <laughs> where they came from. Okay. Does the size of the loft where you keep your birds have an impact or an effect on how your pigeons perform in the air? Uh, personally, I don't, uh, it's a difficult one. It's all, all personal preference. Me, I like my, my kit loft big enough for the, for the perch to fit on the floor. So it means if there's 12 perches, there will be enough for 12 birds on the floor. And the performance wise, um, no, I don't, I don't think so. It, it, it all depends. If you if you keep well, if you keep thirty birds in a small, too small loft for them, yes, I think that will influence how they perform. Yeah. Well, obviously, my thoughts. Yeah, and even for health, I don't think that's yeah, healthy. Yeah, health is number one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How do you choose a mentor if you are a newbie? Because there are people that would rather say, uh, "Come, I'll send you birds and make a business out of this." Yeah, see that that's what's killing our sport. Um, a guy who just wants to make a quick buck out of you, and you you you're just starting out. You you're super excited. Now this guy says to you, "Yeah, he'll help you," 
here's some birds go breed them he doesn't tell you anything he doesn't give you any advice or nothing now you go you breed for your first year second year now your birds that you bred out of this this family is is not good or it doesn't perform up to your standard it, it, it demoralizes you completely like a, you should whoever wants to help you or whoever you choose as your mentor he must say to you okay come let's help let's see here's the birds i'll fly them that's how they roll you can choose anyone what you list for i'll give you guidelines on what to do and i'll help you for the first six months i'll help you flying uh, uh, training others and then you take it from there that's the type of mentor you must look for someone that will help you from the start until he says okay you ready grasshopper go do it yourself okay you're ready grasshopper there are people who have started their families out of a hen or a cock. Which do you prefer, a cock or a hen, and why? Um, it all. So, so I remember, uh, yeah, growing up, my dad always spoke about uh, the foundation cock or foundation hen. Uh, I think it's also preference. Um, my dad's family had a foundation hen where everything it was built around that bird. You know what I mean? The aspects or whatever, and so it's personal whatever you feel like if you have a, a a cock that you feel okay everything must be like this cock then yes then make that your foundation and breathe around him you feel it with about the hen the new towards the hen it's, there's no right or wrong it's what you feel like okay that's going to be my foundation pigeon i'm going to build my family around him do you believe some colors roll better than others uh no there's the color has got nothing to do with it uh, um, yeah, no, sorry, that's a short answer, no, color's got nothing but nothing to do with it. Okay, okay, like, can I stretch that a bit? Yeah, of course. So what about, <clears throat> what about those colors, I think you mentioned something about those colors that were introduced, that are, mm. that we don't have original Birmingham's from them. Um, Isn't that going to have an influence in how the birds perform? Yes, okay, so obviously if, if, if people crossed out Birmingham's or yes. rollers, to, to introduce a color into your into your stock or whatever yes i think those birds will um not perform as your pure bloods if you can call it that um but obviously there is videos where it shows where it took a guy 10 10 years with a certain color that's actually not a birmingham color and yes now they perform but never as good as the original thing it's, Got it. Do you uh, do you stock everything you breed, and how do you stock your birds? No, um, I don't stock everything I breed. It's, it's quite a it's quite a um, meticulous, I think is the word, process. Um, ideally, I wouldn't have stock birds. Only birds that fly and and breed out of my kit loft and put them back into the sky. But it will, there will be a thing that if you breed, if you breed uh, four babies out of a pair, two gets lost. Oh, they, they fly or whatever they develop very nicely but now the dad and the mom passes away okay now you must take the the best one cock or, or and hen if you got both and maybe stock them just to pres preserve the blood in your lofts if you know what i mean but um yeah stocking stocking depends on on if you're gonna lose it if you only bred one bird uh, are you going to still, you can fly it, but then if the dad dies, obviously maybe we must save it now <laughs> to, to preserve the bloodline, if, if you can call it that. In a competition team, <coughs> do you fly more cocks or more hens? How do you do it? Okay, so the amount of cocks and hens, again, it doesn't matter. If there's too many birds that roll, then it's 20 birds. If they happen to be 20 cocks that roll the best, then it's going to be 20 cocks. If there's 19 cocks in one hen, doesn't matter. As long as they roll together in unison, roll in unison, do what they have to do, the, the sex of the bird is got, is, doesn't matter. Okay. Who would you say are the people you like and think are doing a great job with raising birds, locally or internationally, currently or in the past? Okay, so that's a quite a also another thing that you must decide for yourself what you like how that person does it. So there's a few oaks. Um, obviously, my dad was number one. He, I mean, he was the guy I looked up, up for in the sport. From Tommy Lopesher, he understands this breed as well. Um, my uncle also very good. Uh, Quibus uh, Westhuizen. 
And then guys from the past, is all the all the godfathers of it, Benson, Bob Brown, Oli Harris, uh, uh, Les Bazans, those are the guys. I'd rather listen, I'd rather do research, look at them and what they did and try to implement it into my own, my own, uh, and see what works for me, what, what, what they said. Yeah, so that, those are the guys, obviously the OGs. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, what has been your biggest challenge in raising rollers over the years? Um, biggest challenge is, I think what everybody struggles for eh, is to, <laughs> to breed the perfect, the perfect bird. And then to multiply it by another another 19, you know what I mean? I think that's the biggest struggle we're all doing with. I mean, if we all bred champions, then it wouldn't be a struggle. But that's the thing. You must breed the perfect Birmingham. That's, that's, that's the answer. <laughs> 100%. If you lost all your birds and had to start all over again, whose birds would you start with? I'm, I'm very lucky in, in that sense because my... My dad's family, pure, pure my dad's family, I can go to three guys and just go take exactly what is my birds again, you know what I mean? So, for me, it's this, this, uh, uh, uh to Harry, they still breed, also main, main, well, can you please breed. also add their names? Uh, yeah, so, sorry, uh, Chris to Manek, Harry Manek, and uh, even, my dad's family is even in England. Charles Bots. Nice. I can import my own da my dad's birds back <laughs> from England if I need to. Nice, <laughs> like. But I'll, I'll always stick with what my dad built. Um, I won't somewhere introduce or start with anyone else because I know these birds. This, and I'm lucky enough to have people that only breed them as well, or mo mainly that. So yeah. Got it. Got it. Most people have Birmingham rollers with muffs. What's your take on Birmingham rollers with muffs? No, they shouldn't have muffs. There's the the standard says clean leg. So uh, uh, yeah, no muffs. Muffs were obviously as as they saw birds that have got more more and more feathers. They breed those together and muffs eventually there. But no, Birmingham should be a clean clean leg bird. Got it. So if they have muffs, that means there's something that was inbred in that family. It can be inbred or selective bred to have muffs. So uh, um, you get clean leg and then you get. Uh, what's the word? It's like they look like they wear pants, so it's feathers all the way to the the feet. Oh, and some yes. Some birds will shoot that. some feathers on the feet, so people will take those birds, breed them, breed them, breed them, eventually to breed muffs. But uh, the standard says clean legs, so keep them, <laughs> keep them clean. <laughs> okay, with that same question, mm -hmm. uh, what's your take on Birmingham rollers with crests? Yeah, no. Also, it's, it's, it's not, the same. Yeah, same, same answer. Um, I, I personally think. It was, I, I don't know if it was a freak thing that they saw, it, that uh, or I was introduced, I don't know, it's a very difficult thing, but no, it's not for me, to be honest. <laughs> okay. Two of your favorite colors. Um, okay, if I, if I do like colors, uh, grizzles, especially classic grizzles, or sandies, um, and it's a color that is not even supposed to be in, in, in rollers, it's Andalusian. <laughs> I know you were going there. I knew you were going there. Okay, I'd cool then. When you make your beds, do you breed short to long or short to short? How do you do it? Um, so, I don't think... It's also, again, if you, re, if you keep breeding short to short to short to short, eventually the family will be short. And if you remember, they only judge... Uh, judge a bird's roll depends on how far it must be a certain distance to count as a roll but also saying that rolling a too short and a too long pigeon doesn't mean that you're going to get the middle and get a perfect roller now they're going to be short or too long so you must i'll breed the bird that the distance is perfect and re breed that bird either to a short or a long because too wrong don't make a right so already take something that's correct and breed try to you know what i mean balance it out got it got it do you breed open loft or individual loft? Which one is your favorite? Um, I prefer open loft. Um, closed loft is, if you keep on it, like you clean your loft every day, make sure the water is clean. Because think about it, if there's no, if there's no sun cage in front, of the, in, in front of it, that bird sits in that little hockey the whole time. You know what I mean? So if you, if you, I would like to breed singular, but um, I think it's health, health-wise and, and upkeep is so open off is a bit better easier to maintain so don't you experience a uh, nest jumping where mm, 
No, because, uh, so we're quite particular on how we do it. So in each box, obviously, you close them off, you put the hens with, make sure they paired up. Well, sorry, I'm wrong. I first make them pair in, in my lua prang, okay. then I bring them to the, to the boxes, close them up, and every day open one for a few certain hours, open the next one. And I'll open them, open them, eventually open more, and eventually there won't be any nest jumps. I mean, uh, it does happen, obviously. You won't know because you have to look at them 24-7. But no, uh, very rarely, I think it does happen. Got it, got it. What do you think about roll downs? Do you think they can be used in building a family? No, if, if the birds... Uh, okay, so there's... If a bird's a roll down, meaning it flies, and it from where it, at height rolls all the way to the ground, that bird deserves the kit loft next to the road, which is aka the dust bag. <laughs> okay. Um, so, no roll downs. But you, you must. So a bird that rolls down like that. Yes, no, gone. It must go. But you do get birds that when they about to come sit, one will make a mistake. That's not a roll down. That's just it bumped. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean it does all the time. But a bird that rolls from there all the way, bam! Hopefully it's dead because it's useless. Oh. Okay, so you're saying there are beds that can make mistakes, yeah. and then there are beds that roll down. That roll down. Yes, correct. Got it, got it, got it. And, you, and, and it's sad because sometimes you will have a bird for three years, no mistake, and just that one one day, it was just over the roof, it closes, hits it, dead. It happened to me, it's very sad. <laughs> got it, got it. Out of all the birds you have in your family of birds, what made you choose these birds? <laughs> my dad. <laughs> yeah, my, my, oh, so it uh, was an influence from your dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, I just, I'm just continuing. I pulled it with him the last few years before he passed away. Well, I worked with him. So I, I just have my dad in the back of my head telling me what to do, basically. <laughs> nice. How many birds do you stock in a year? What's your standard for stocking? Birmingham rollers. Um, um, the bird will be lucky if I even stock one a year. I must either lose the mom or dad. Depends on, yeah, either lose one of the two or both of them. Or if if a bird's flown three years, no mistake, and he, he turned out better than his dad, then I'll take the dad out, put him back into the sky because now he's done. His son will take over from here. So. I don't, I don't like, like, my goal is not to have stock birds. That's hopefully something I can achieve one day. Just fly them and breed them out the kit loft. Got it, got it. According to you, what is temperament and strong character in Birmingham rollers? Um, there's a word, I don't know if you've heard it, called hypervigor. Oh. A bird must have attitude. It must, it must be a bird that sits in the loft whimpering away and they're scared and it doesn't have uh, i mean you can see these they they're active and they i mean that's the temperament you're looking for you if they're babies and you just you just uh, uh, wing them from your parents and they sit there in the perch and you play with them and they bite you and smack you that's what you want you don't want a bird that just sits there whimpering away scared of everything that's you want something that's got hyper vigor it's uh, you know that is active and and strong you know what i mean got it got it when should young birds start coming into their role? I've seen birds that start coming into their role at three months or eight months. Um, I like birds to start in six months. Six months to a year, I'll give a bird a chance to start rolling. Uh, I feel that they last longer. Um, I mean, a bird that starts in role in three weeks, I promise you he's not going to fly a second year. Personally, he's either going to kill himself or he's mal. In the, basically, that's what I... Uh, these guys who can do it successfully, Tommy's birds, they started rolling back in the day very early and you could do it. Um, but I think it's personal preference. If you wanna, if you breed to get them to roll in three months, then you do it. But I'll wait up to a year for a bird to roll before I decide, okay, maybe. Would you remove a bird like that or would you use it in your family, the bird that came in early in the row? No, well, if it, if it performs, yeah, I'll keep him. I'll, I'll fly him and then the one day decide if, he, if I'll breed with him. <laughs> Hundred percent, hundred percent. In a week, how many times do you fly your birds, and how do you train your birds? Okay, so flying in, uh, must be hand-in-hand with discipline. You, uh, these birds must understand that 
you know, you're the boss, okay? So birds I fly babies every day, seven days a week until they properly develop and roll like I want them. The competition birds, twice a week. That's, that's how I fly them. Got it. Got it. In your understanding, what is selective breeding? Um, selective breeding, well, it's, if you select certain traits you like in a bird and then you breed those, to, you, said, yeah, you select the traits in each bird that you want and then you breed them together out. That's what I think it is. I, I don't know, honestly. <laughs> No, 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 I, we just, well, I, I'm assuming everything is kind of selective breeding because you select the cock and the hen to breed. Exactly. But now, if you, if you want certain traits, obviously you'll keep that in mind and then you put them together. Then obviously lion breeding is all in uh, breeding daughter, father, mother, two, son, what are, what are. so there's all different things. Select, I think all breeding is selective because you selective, select them yeah. to breed. Okay. I think you probably answered this, mm -hmm. uh, but then let's just show you that again. Do you believe that they are flying birds and breeding birds? By that, I mean birds that should never see the air, and their purpose is to breed only. And they are flying birds, birds that shouldn't be bred, but just flown and nothing else. All, all your breeding stock must have flown so for you to know what they are. I, I, you can't. I don't know how people, anyone, also personal preference, I don't know how you can breed a baby and then in a year's time breed with it and expect you're going you're gonna to breed good babies out of it just purely on pedigree. You must fly your birds and see because that bird you never flown could have been an absolute terrible roller, you know what I mean? I mean in the sky. So what do you know of it? Do you know for certain years it's gonna roll? And then if so, please prove it. <laughs> when you're pairing your beds, do you give them any medication or special food for them to produce you good babies? Uh, in in breeding. Yes. Um, no, breeding is 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 make sure there's always well before you start, make sure your birds are healthy. Because uh, you don't want to mess around with, with medication while they're breeding. Um, so, but in the breeding loft, uh, grit, black grit, pink grit, and matombu at all times. Um, Tombo. Matombu, yeah, king corn. <laughs> king uh, corn, tombo man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then obviously, there is some medications that if you see your birds are looking a little bit funny, you can give them. But you must also remember the, the uh, uh, hen is developing an egg, and now you're giving it deworming, it's going to have a massive effect. And um, yeah, so just keep them healthy from the start and hope, hopefully you don't have to medicate because it will have an effect definitely on the, on the babies, how they grow up. Got it, got it. When someone says body type, what does that mean to you? What is body type? Body type is what the standard that was written by Bill Benson says the bird should, should look like. So it's uh, like you spoke earlier about, about type. So a bird, what the body type, or what the bird is, what it should look like, has been written down for us in 1964 of what these birds should look like. So that's body type should look like what the standard says it should look like. Got it. You mentioned Bill Penson. Mm. Do you think that we can improve from what he has set a standard to be? Yes. Or should we just keep on going back and referencing him in any day-to-day -day thing that we do in raising all birds. No, no, I think definitely we've definitely in, improved on all the all the, the original uh, uh, champions for it, uh, all the guys I mentioned before. But um, yeah, so uh, sorry, let me just think. It's what kind I of say. a trick question yeah, in no, a no, way. No, see, we have it's either you improve or you just want to keep the standard. Maintain the standard, yeah. Maintain the standard. Okay, remember the, the body type standard I've been speaking about is just what they should should look like okay yeah. what they said it should be yes the role in whatever they spoke about we that we can approve on that okay so how the bird perform and whatever so it's like for instance like you said if you sell if you select a mentor or you go to a lot of people and this guy says this this guy says this this guy says this are you going to decide i'm going to follow that guy no take a little bit of information and test everything for yourself you know don't follow anyone to the t just take their core values and implement it for yourself and see if it works if it doesn't work for you then what if that guy told you okay let me try that now and then see how it works for you maybe use a combination of the two so yeah definitely we can improve and do what works for you
Got it. So we cannot improve the body type. The body type is the standard. That's that what said. it says. Yeah, that's been written for us. That's what they should look like. And the body type has been written to look like that to handle the role. So eventually, if you, you, you breed them too small head and too open in the kill, they're going to struggle to handle that force that bird is rolling. So they were designed to look like that to handle the role. Mm. Got it. So tell me, with Bill, Bill Penson, was he setting a standard for showing, for show or for competition? No, no, the standard he, he wrote for what the Birmingham roller should look like was to be able to roll, to handle the roll, you know what I mean? Um, we just took that standard and used it to show our birds. So that's where the, the massive uh, misconception comes from and uh, it's all over the world is that people say no if your bird looks a certain type of way it's just a showing bird the ball won't fly uh, that's that's bs the, the standard was written so the Burma roller can handle the role got it. Got it. Got it. according to you when is breeding season in south africa personal preference um uh, okay can i can mm. i can i add something because based on this question, I've heard people say that uh, breeding season is winter seasons because uh, winter babies are more stronger than summer babies. Because in the summer we have fleas and stuff like mm. that, and babies tend and uh, parents tend to avoid their babies because of all um, of that moist and. Yeah, 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 no, I agree with it. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not. It shouldn't be nice to breed, especially in the summertime when it's so hot. It must be quite uncomfortable. But exactly. the issue with our sport is everything happens for us in the winter. Exactly. Flying season, show season. So me, I prefer start of spring. Or yeah, spring when spring starts, that's what I'll, I'll breed. So it's just, it's just heating up. All the competitions are done. I'll breed until uh, whatever time when it gets too hot and then okay, done.